All right, so I decided to make a quick video because I might change my opinion as I dive more into the Lions tape, and I've watched plenty of them this year. Um, obviously, this was a team, if you followed me for a while, then you know this is a team that I had as the number one seed coming into the season. I had the Rams loosening them in the divisional round of the playoffs, but the Lions are not the best team in the league uh, right now. And I think there's a great opportunity for the Rams to win. So before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Let's dive in. Also, be sure to follow me on social media, all social media at JK Bogan. Okay, so this is meant to be just a quick hitter video to just give you my thoughts, immediate reaction, uh, finishing the live stream, and just my thoughts on the Lions matchup. Not really thinking too much of it. I'm not trying to read notes or anything. I'm not trying to dive in. I just want to give you my immediate thoughts about this game. My thoughts are this. The Lions are 12 and 5 this year. Rams of course are 10 and 7. I look at the Lions, the offense has it, they're fireworks. I mean, let's be honest here. Ben Johnson did a great job uh, as the offensive coordinator last year. He came back this year because he believed in this team. Would not be surprised if this team went on a run if they are able to beat the Rams, but uh, there are some issues that I have. Let's start off with the good things. The good things, I guess the bad things if you're a Rams fan, uh, Jared Goff is playing good football right now. Okay, He he can throw down the field. He can test down the field. He is going to go at, go at after you. Um, my biggest thing Thing, watching golf on tape uh, or, you know, watching golf in general is that he doesn't like those, those short, th those, those throws that are very, uh, you know, marginally made, right? Um, he wants a guy to be open. Uh, that is good, I guess, for the Rams. The problem is if you're playing that bend, don't break golf is going to likely pick you apart if you don't have a plan. So that's the good thing. Um, if you're, you know, Jared Goff is that, you know, you are, um, you know, fearless. You are, you, you are not afraid to hold on to the ball an extra second and deliver it with a strike down field. However, he also has great weapons. And when you look at, you know, Jameer Gibbs, the rookie uh, finished with just under 950 yards for the season rushing, um, and then, of course, you know, Montgomery going over a thousand and you got, you know, the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, unfortunately, uh, it looks like Sam Laporta is not going to play in this game. He did suffer a hyperextended knee and bone bruise, so I don't expect him to play in this. Not sure about Cleve Raymond, but they also have guys like Jamison Williams and, of course, Josh Reynolds, who the Rams know well. Um, and, you know, they did make a trade, very underrated trade that I very much liked. A guy that had, I think it was around 800 yards last year for the Browns in Donovan Peoples-Jones, who actually went to Michigan. So, you know, he stays close to home there. He could be an interesting little X factor in this upcoming game, but offense lines really good. I mean, really stout. You look at Decker on the outside, you have Penny Sewell, who's one of the best tackles in football. You know, you got rag. Now you got guys like that. I mean, this, this is a really good offensive line going to be a tough matchup. However, I think the Rams are playing at a really high level up front. I'm starting to see it. Bobby Brown had a great game today against the 49ers. Kobe Turner, I mean, it's every week with him. Aaron Donald off of some rest. Uh, that should be something. So I do like their, their up front, but as far as the Lions go, they have a lot to like on the offensive side. They're an explosive team. They're dangerous because they're dangerous to themselves and they're dangerous if they work out because Dan Campbell is fearless. He is going to go for it on fourth down. He is going to go for it on fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and three, fourth and four, and fourth and five. I've seen him go for it on fourth and 11. This guy is stubborn. He wants to be that aggressive coach. He does not want to be, you know, taken out of it. And so the Rams are going to have to be cognizant of that. And I think it's a great opportunity for Raheem Morris's defense to stop them early on. If they want to go for it on fourth down, do what you did to the Bengals in the Super Bowl. Okay, the Bengals went for it on fourth down and Ernest Jones batted the ball away. And that was a huge momentum shift right immediately to the Rams. Uh, so yeah, it's as good as a turnover. A turnover on downs is basically a turnover. So we're going to see a lot of that. The Rams are going to have to be very careful in not over pursuing. They're going to have to be uh, sound and disciplined because I've seen them go for it with just a run. I've seen Goff uh, you know, fake it and, you know, throw deep down the field to Laporta, although they won't have him. They'll have James Mitchell. I believe Brock Wright as well as the other tight end. So, you know, this is definitely um, a, a team that is aggressive. They're going to throw deep down the field. They do keep taking shots downfield. So if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. 
Um, and that's that's the thing that you really need to be aware of. And so when you have these, you know, corners that like to play off a little bit, that could be a problem. I think Akella Witherspoon is going to have to step up big time. I hope he trails Amon Ross St. Brown. I really do. I'm not expecting that. I think he's just going to play predominantly on the outside. But uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, when he lines up in the slot, I want Kello on him, if I'm being honest. Um, big opportunity here. Darian Kendrick has to be at his best. You look at the safeties. Uh, there's just no nonsense here. This offense will put points on the board if you let them. However, we saw on... Th- Uh, Thanksgiving, we saw how the Packers were able to put pressure on Jared Goff, and that is when he struggles. Jared Goff is not great under pressure. He actually really struggles, um, and and I mean, anyone should struggle under pressure, but Goff, he doesn't have that mobility that, say, a Carson Wentz has, that, say, a Brock Purdy has, that Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, and so for that reason, it makes it hard for him to get out of the pocket and escape, and the way Byron Young comes off the edge. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Byron Young is chasing down Jared Goff. He's come close this year to getting that chase down sack, but it's normally against Geno Smith. It's normally against Tyrod Taylor. It's against Jalen Hurts. It's against Brock Purdy. Those aren't easy quarterbacks to bring down, but Jared Goff, you can chase down. And so I think that that is going to come into play here. The speed on the outside with, um, you know, and let's not forget Ernest Jones with the blitzing. I think Raheem Morris, who's already gone up against Jared Goff back in 2021 anyway, uh, he'll be able to put some pressure on him. And then you look at the defense, and this is really the cause for concern. This defense is not good against, you know, big passing plays. And I mean, anytime you let Nick Mullins throw for what, almost 4,000 yards, um, he's throwing deep down the field. I mean, if Jordan Addison didn't just have an awful, absolutely awful, awful ball tracking bit where he threw it perfectly and Addison slowed down. He would have had three touchdowns and it would have been 27 to 30 instead of 30 to 20. Um, The point is that while the lions have some big names, they have a Chauncey Gardner Johnson. They have a Brian branch. Uh, You know, I think of Fadu Melifonwu is playing really well. Kirby Joseph, they have names. I mean, you know, like that's the thing. Cam Sutton from the, uh, the Steelers names, but, for whatever reason, this secondary has been susceptible to not just getting beat, getting absolutely demolished, destroyed, whatever you want to say. We saw it. Jordan Love wasn't afraid to attack him. We saw Nick Mullins not afraid to attack him. And of course, he has Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. Um, You really think Matthew Stafford isn't going to want to attack him? So he's going to have to be on point. No overthrows. You have to hit those deep shots when they're there uh, because you can get on this team quickly and also, this team can score quickly. So if this turns into a shootout, you have to take advantage of that. But I do think looking at this matchup, this offense is fireworks. This defense is going to give up fireworks. And the defensive line, albeit they do a nice job against the run, if you do get out on the, you know, you, you could get some mobility going in your, your quarterback. Stafford could pick up some yards. If you want to bring in Carson Wentz on some plays, that could give him some problems. I think Wentz, his play today opened up the door potentially of using him. The risk, I think, outweighs the reward because, you know, the reward is probably like every now and then you get a nice eight-yard boost. Um, But the risk is that now Dresser Wynn is your backup quarterback in the playoffs. That's just too much of a risk. So I don't think they'll do that because they just don't want Carson Wentz to be put in harm's way. But I think when you look at this game, this is a very good team for the Rams to be going up against. They're a very good team in general, but I think with, with what Sean McVay wants to do, with what Matthew Stafford wants to do, um, they could get up on this Lions team quickly if the Lions are not careful. The same thing is the Lions could get up quickly with the Rams. The key to this game right now, and again, we're going to get into it in depth down the road this week. The key to this game for the Lions is if you can learn how to establish the run against this Rams defense, not many teams have. We saw Elijah Mitchell get going a little bit, and then the Rams started to slow him down. And that was without Ernest Jones in the middle, so keep that in mind. But it's like Saquon Barkley shut down, Alvin Kamara shut down. They don't stick with the run game. Like teams literally abandon the run when they play the Rams. And if you abandon the run against the Rams, then it makes things a little bit easier to telegraph and calculate, especially Jared Goff, the coach on the other sideline who knows everything about him since he coached him for, you know, a few years. So here's the thing that I'm saying, okay? I'm saying right now, the Lions are going to have to be able to run the ball. 
they're going to want to establish it early on. They're going to want to attack the Rams. They're, they're, they cannot abandon it, okay? If you want to beat the Rams, they've only lost once in the last eight games, and that took the Ravens, and the way they won is because the mobility of Lamar Jackson gave them fits. So the way to do this is you're going to want to attack the, the ground early on if you're the, the uh, Detroit Lions. You're going to want to use that power running game out of David Montgomery, and then you're going to want to hit them with the speed game in Jameer Gibbs. If you can get that thing going and you open up play action, golf is one of the best play action quarterbacks in the league. And obviously, you know, Sean McVay knows that then now this could be a problem. However, that is their thing. I think with the Rams, you got to play your style of football. You got to continue to play balanced Rams football. You're not running it too much. You're not throwing it too much. You're playing your game. That's what got you to this point. That Giants game isn't who you are. That Giants game also was four touchdowns. So you don't want to take too much away from it uh, in a bad way, but that's not who you are. Matthew Stafford is way more uh, explosive. And what I think that we're going to see in this game is I think a lot of people are going to think back to the Giants game and, and you know, they, they might be shocked. Like, wow, Stafford looks really good today. The Giants game was freezing cold. It was 3,000 miles across the country, okay? And again, like the wind and everything, like this is going to be indoors at Ford Field in a position where Stafford knows that arena like he knows the back of his hand. So I think the Rams are in a really good spot here. Early, early prediction, I'm going to go 28-24. I think the Rams do put together another game in which they score four touchdowns. Four extra points all made by uh, Maher. It was windy, uh, you know, at Levi's. Okay, no excuse. He still has to make it, but it was windy. I think in the dome, no excuse. Ford Field, get it done. I think the Rams are going to ride Kyron Williams, set up the play-action passing attack, and I think it's going to be all she wrote uh, towards the end of the game. I think the the Rams will put together a drive, and I see it more as a 28-17 game the Lions score a touchdown at the end and get a chance to maybe have an onside kick or something like that, or even possess the ball again, we get a nice stop from the defense. What I think that we're starting to see is that this defense is really starting to come into its own in the trenches. Bobby Brown, again, great game. You look at what Kobe Turner's doing, the edge defenders. I mean, Michael Hoyt had a huge sack. You can't take anything away from him. That's not including Aaron Donald being back. That's not including Ernest Jones being the, uh, the best blitzing linebacker in the league. That is the thing. So I like this game, 28-24 Rams. This is my rapid reaction, as close to rapid reaction as it gets, to this game, this matchup. Without diving into it, no stats or anything, like unless it's on the top of my head, no stats. I'm not looking at any notes. I just wanted to <clears throat> give you my thoughts on this game. Will we see Carson Wentz being utilized in sub packages? I don't think so, but I wouldn't rule it out. So the point is... I think Matthew Stafford's going to get it done in Detroit. And I think there's a chance that they'll be heading to Tampa or Philly because I do think the Packers are going to upset the Dallas Cowboys this weekend. So again, plenty of content coming your way throughout the week. So definitely don't go anywhere. Um, but this is just a video I wanted to put out before I dive into all that stuff. See, maybe, you know, I can compare between the two videos, see where I was here. And maybe I changed my mind a little bit about what I see and what I notice. But I've watched a lot of Lions football this year, so I feel pretty good that this is going to be kind of accurate to how I feel at the end of the week when I do all my research and all my film you know, review. But appreciate you guys. You guys take care. You can follow me at JK Bogan. Please be sure to hit that like button. It helps more than you know. Also, subscribe button. I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. You can start playing Pick'em or Weekly Fantasy for any sport today, Jake. Users will receive a 100% deposit match up to $100 if they use promo code OTE at sign up. Start playing Pick'em in weekly fantasy football today with Underdog Fantasy. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.